How do we find our perfect tire pressure? Well, like a lot of things in mountain biking, it's the result of trial and error. So today we've come to the woods. We're gonna try some different tire pressures with some different rim widths, as well as even some tire inserts to find out the pitfalls and highlights of each setup. What I want to do is show a range of different combinations and situations. The things I will be comparing will be tyre casing, pressure, rim width and experimenting with inserts. I'm going to keep the same tyre on the front on the same FSA rim. For your reference, my personal details are. I weigh 82 kilograms, I like long walks on the beach and the music of Barry Manilow. Currently within cycling, irrespective of discipline, there tends to be a trend that wider rims, so rims that have a larger internal diameter, are more favourable. So today I will be comparing an XC rim, a Mavic with a 23mm internal diameter, and this FSA Enduro rim, which has a 29mm internal diameter. Now, rims have got wider for a couple of reasons, but a lot of it is to do with tyre profile and the way our tyres interact with the ground. A wider rim can often give more of a shoulder, which you can lean against in turns. It also means you can run lower pressure as it spreads the load laterally along the wheel. Now, another point to note here. Sometimes larger amounts of internal diameter can come at the cost of weight. So it's no surprise to see most companies with their cross-country rims going narrower than the sometimes 30 millimeters plus of enduro and downhill wheel sets. Often XC tires don't come with a large shoulder like this aggressive enduro tire. And the tire and rim need to work in harmony with one another. Please also bear in mind that the Mavic rim I'm using today really wasn't intended for this sort of riding. It was just the narrowest rim I had in the house. For this comparison, I want you to imagine that you've found your tire of choice. In this case for me, it is a Martello 2.4 29 inch in trail casing and you're very happy to have it fitted on the back. This video is about maximizing the performance of that tire with other setup changes. I'm going to be riding different sections. Firstly, a turn that will try and deform the tyre laterally. And finally, a rocky section of trail that will put a high load into the tyre in the form of square hits and compression spikes. So we've just spent a little while riding the same turn in a repeatable manner. And although I'm not sure how much it will show up on video, the wheels really did feel different in terms of the amount of stability and support that they offered, especially at the lower pressures. And that got us thinking, can a tire insert help us mimic the feel of a wider rim by offering more stability to the narrower rim? Now, I think this is really interesting, not least because you might benefit all over your riding, but actually for me, it's quite hard to um, include an extreme situation in a repeatable circumstance. And what I mean by that is you're probably thankful for higher pressures, wider rims, and something like a tire insert when you least expect it and things get a little bit rowdier than you intended. 
So we've had a morning rolling around the woods and testing out our tyres, and what have we found out? Well, I think what's really interesting with tyres and the way we set them up, and our wheels included, is they're often judged by their worst result, so when they fail. But that occasion might only happen once a ride, but when it does happen, it can be disastrous. So you're kind of always having to plan for the worst case scenario. I think what was really interesting for me is actually in my quest to find the perfect tire pressure. In the turns, there was huge amounts of instability on the lower pressures. Now that might not necessarily come across in the video, but it was something that it made me feel, hmm, I didn't have that larger element of control and there was certainly an element of unpredictability in the turns. But actually, when rolling at square hits with our very high-tech stick method, it actually revealed that the lower pressures deformed so much better that it was a lot more comfortable. But tires, like our suspension, need to be bottomed out on occasion, but not too often. Because what's happening is, if you run your tire so hard that it can never deform, well then you're basically giving away grip for free. Similarly, if it's deforming too much and on a high velocity impact, it could slice the tire or damage the rim. So you want something that's getting close to bottoming out without doing just that. I think the thing I noticed most of all in terms of my comparison from the two rim widths was actually how good modern trail tires are at coping with those deforming loads. In the turns, definitely the wider rim did feel that bit more stable, but it wasn't night and day. And that's where tire inserts come in because they enable you to run lower pressures without risking you ruining a ride or worse yet, bottoming out and destroying a rim. So what that means is there's a nice chamber at the top of the tire that is supple and grippy, but if there's any square hits, they won't go straight to the rim. So what is the perfect tire pressure for me? Well, on some trail casing tires such as these, on a rim like the FSA, which is a 29 mil internal, I'd probably hover around the 25 PSI for the back and maybe as low as 23 for the front. If I was to go narrower, would my tire pressures go up? Absolutely if only for that once in a blue moon occasion where I hit a rock a bit faster than I was anticipating or I'm unable to weight the bike. Like I said, that might only happen once a ride, but if it does, it's enough to ruin the ride. And so our tire pressures have to anticipate such an occasion. So with the ongoing conversation about wider rims, how important is that to your everyday trail rider? Well, for me, in my personal opinion and experience, reasonably so. I think for an aggressive trail bike such as this with quite an aggressive tire with a big shoulder on it, I would tend to lean to the slightly wider side of things. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. Like I said, the stability is absolutely massive, especially when you're pushing load through the bike. But a big one as well means I can get the supple feeling of lower pressures thanks to a larger contact patch. This is without then having a few problems should the terrain get a bit choppy. I know from my personal experience that if I do run lower pressures, anything sub 28 on what would be a more old school or narrow rim, I'm going to be burping and I'm going to be puncturing, damaging the tire, which yeah, not only hurts my ride, but it hurts my wallet too. So both things have to be carefully managed. I think it's also worth noting that we haven't even got into climbing today and all the traction benefits are, that are to be had from running lower pressures there. I never thought I'd get tired of hitting a loamy turn, but I have to admit, even I was thinking, hmm, 40 times is enough. Now, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and get in the comments below. What do you think is the perfect tire pressure for you? And what do you think of, whim rims, of whims getting wider? That's what I'm gonna stick with. What do you think of whims getting wider? <laughs> Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.